There are many fine and useful films available about the mental health of children, for professionals and the general public too. During the next 30 minutes, we're going to show you some revealing parts of these films. Here is Walter Clark of the National Clearinghouse for Mental Health Information to tell you about the first group of film segments. You've just seen a few frames from films dealing with the mental health of children. These films were designed to help children survive emotionally in a world dominated, not too successfully, by adults. The film clips you are about to see were taken from films that fall into about three categories. The first group was taken from films designed for use by teachers in the classroom to help children say how they feel about things that happen around them. The idea is that if children can learn to express their feelings freely, then perhaps they will be able to cope more successfully later on. Here, for instance, are excerpts from a few films of this type. Nice shot, CG5! We have chosen to call this type of film stimulus films. I don't feel like it. I just don't feel like it now. Come on, Gary, the place is deserted. You want to be a picture, don't you? Come on. Ah, you stink. You missed fire, Myrtle. You stink. My papa. What does he do? He leads the brakes. Oh, that's nothing. Yeah. Anybody could turn a screw or put on tires or something. Yeah, but he has to. You have to do it the right way because if the car has to stop and not on the right way, he could cause an accident. So you're saying your father's important? It's an important job. Well, if he's so important, what kind of car does he drive? He has a Chevrolet. It's five years old. It's not even running. It's at the garage where my father's working now. Anybody that was important probably have a new Cadillac or something. Mm -hmm. Corvette or something. Can't be very important if he had just a little old Chevrolet. Come on, Eddie, let's go. I guess there are a lot of times when I feel I'm a nobody. But my father, I always thought of him as an important person, a somebody. Is he out of it like I am? <laughs> Possibly, we can't all be heroes, the great earth-shaking kind. But do you think, in a certain sense, heroes can come in different sizes and in unexpected places? Do you think that, in a way, even the unknown person could be a kind of hero? Is it possible that when we do what we feel should be done, each of us can become a kind of hero, each of us, even you. In this next film, a boy decides upon a drastic solution to his problems at home. Each person has different, uh, different parts of their life. Did you have to do that? The green parts of my life. Did you have to shit away? That's your brother. Well, did you have to give Shadow away? Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? Well, it was just a cat. So what's the difference? That cat was ruining my furniture. Just clawing. Clawing and clawing. Now, will you drop it? You don't miss Shadow at all, do you? I bet you could give me away and you wouldn't miss me. It's a girl. You're getting to be just like your father. Why can't you behave like your sister? Because I'm it's big enough to fight back. We're on the bottom of the third of Pittsburgh, and the Pirates lead Atlanta 2-1. to one. That's a good pitch, that fastball up and yeah. in when you know it. Boy, uh, yeah. Yeah. Shut up, can't you see I'm trying to listen to the radio? Dan, what are you always shouting? Get out, of Get out of here. I don't want to see you again tonight. Hey! Why don't we really run away? This segment has much in common with the last situation. 
It demonstrates that parents, regardless of their social or economic status, often have difficulty communicating effectively with their children. I give up buying you nice clothes. Look at that hair. I hope the neighbors didn't see you when you came in. Button up your shirt properly at the dinner table. Oh, now, Margaret, boys will be boys after all. Boys get a little dirt on them when they play. A little dirt? Robert, for heaven's sake, the trouble with Paul is that he's never had any discipline. He has no respect for property, his own or anyone else's. Let's not make a mountain out of a mole. Mountain out of a mole? No wonder there's no respect in this house when I have to raise a child without any help from you. No wonder I feel so irritable every day. Keeping this house in order is enough to wear anyone out. You just don't care about that, do you? I'm tired, all right. I worked all day, remember? There are more important things going on than dirty shoes. Another excuse for not spending more time with your family. All right, then. If it means peace at the dinner table, Paul, I don't want you loitering around after school from now on. Come right home. Robert, for heaven's sake, when you do finally say something to the boy, it's completely unrealistic. The child needs some recreation. All right. But be in time for supper from now on. And no more mud, you hear? Yes, sir. Children raised in homes where bickering and dissension are common will frequently have difficulty maintaining stable emotional relationships when they grow up. Unfortunately, it is often difficult for parents to see their behavior as destructive. The chicken's a bit dried out and cold. I suppose you think I planned it that way. Just an observation, dear. Forget it. It's you that wants to forget everything. The chicken is cold because Paul was late. His love of mud ruined the dinner. I believe we ended the case of Paul versus the mud. You brought it up. Well, I'll now end it. That's the last I want to hear about dirt at the dinner table, and that's that. Hey, Dad, we really had fun. Paul, is there no end to your aggravation tonight? Clean it up with a napkin. I didn't mean to do it. You never mean to do anything. I wish for once you'd mean to be tidy. There's just no discipline in this house. You've got to learn what's right and wrong. You should have considered the fact that you'd be traipsing through mud before going along with your friends. I only want to get the live me to. Think before you act, Paul. That's hard. Nobody said it was easy, dear. A lot of trouble I get into. I don't mean to do it. Mom and Dad just don't understand that. I would like to emphasize that the clips you have just seen are from films used mostly by teachers in the primary grades and are almost always accompanied by discussion guides. The clips you are about to see in the next segment are designed for an entirely different purpose, and they are for an entirely different audience as well. In the following clips from a series of descriptive films, you will see children afflicted with various neurological and psychological disorders that make it difficult for them to function normally. These segments will illustrate some of the ways these children can be helped. The autistic child doesn't seem to understand any language. Therefore, the teacher speaks simply and demonstrates the meaning of words with gestures. Compared to other five-year-olds, Jennifer's play is incredibly limited. As a consequence, play must begin with very uncomplicated games in which the child can succeed. This helps overcome the usual resistance and disinterest in play. This segment was taken from a film produced in Great Britain. It illustrates the help being given children that suffer from inability to perceive language normally. Some of the children are more severely handicapped than others. Those with extreme speech difficulties are in a separate class under an experienced teacher. These children suffer from what is normally termed receptive aphasia, and this simply put means that the children are unable to understand what is said to them either totally or in part uh, consequently they're not able to speak themselves and this in spite of the fact that they are not deaf they are not of low intelligence and they are not grossly emotionally disturbed Jean, Jean. 
Jean, give me your green word book. Jean, give me your green word book. Jean, Jean, give me your green word book. Give it to me. Thank you very much. Now, we feel with these children that they must be given some alternative means of communication. And the interesting thing which has arisen from experimental work with this is that once you give them a means of communicating, they are much more likely to channel this communication into speech. Reading is the communication bridge, and if they can learn that, their comprehension and speech often improve. Stephen, Stephen, look at the board. Stephen, sit on the desk. Sit on the desk. That's right. Sit on the desk. Now, what are you doing? The message of this film is an encouraging one. Help is possible and available for many children who suffer from aphasia. Another area where motion pictures can be useful is in the field of training. Some films are designed primarily for training psychologists, psychiatrists, social workers, and many others. Many serious efforts are being made to help adults in communicating in a positive and effective way with children. This sequence shows counselors learning how to recognize and avoid roadblocks to effective communication with children. I'm Jane, your 11-year-old daughter. And this morning, I dropped a hint to you that I am not liking recess. I don't like to go out in the playground. Now, this isn't like Jane, so you feel she has a problem, and your job is to try to be a counselor for Jane. So we'll pick it up now. Jane's come home from school, OK? All right. Hi, Jane. Uh, how's everything? Yeah. You told me something this morning uh, about recess. What'd I say? You didn't like it. Oh, no, I hate it. Hate recess? Yeah. Recess is really pretty important. You know how I feel about it. You've got to get in there and develop social skills and the physical prowess. Oh, bunk, Dad. I'm not going to get out there and develop social skills. How can you develop social skills? I'm all alone. Nobody to play with. Have you asked some of the girls if you can join in? Mm, yes, I've asked the girls to join in. That isn't a problem. What's, what's your problem? I hate baseball. You're, Gene, you're really good at baseball. I am not good at baseball. I am lousy. I get up there and strike out. That's why I don't want to play. When we play in the backyard, you do really well. OK, let's hold it, Patrick, uh, and let me comment on what you've done so far. I think you're using a number of the 12 roadblocks. You're evaluating, and you're kind of preaching, and you're lecturing to me. You're really turning me off, and you're also making me mad. And I feel you're not understanding me at all. Let's do this again. Would you be willing now? Try it again, and this time, Forget about the roadblocks. Don't try to send any of the 12 roadblocks, but just use our active listening or the feedback. In other words, hear my feelings and feed back in your own words only my message or only the feelings. OK? Let's try it again now. OK. Yeah. Hi, Jane. Uh, how's everything? Yeah. Not so good, huh? No. School. You you mentioned something this morning about recess. Uh, Want to tell me about it? I hate recess. Just hate it. Recess is really a 
pain for oh, you, huh? Oh, boy, it sure is. How would you feel standing out there alone, nobody to play with? You know, like being all by yourself. I sure don't. All the other girls are out playing baseball. Well, you sound like you don't like baseball. I hate it. Just hate it. You got all kinds of bad feelings about it. Yeah. I'm just terrible getting them. I strike out, and when I'm out in the field, I can't catch the ball, and the girls laugh at me and tease me. It's pretty upsetting to you to have people reacting this way, teasing you and making Boy, it fun. Boy, it sure is. That's the way I am about everything, though. I'm that way about piano. I hate to practice the piano in front of you, you and Mom, because then I'm no good, and you'll see my mistakes. So it's not just in baseball. It's you feel uncomfortable in front of people even when you play yeah. and practice piano. That's right. It's a problem, because I always have to look good at everything. You, you want to show people that you can really do it, huh? Yeah, I just hate to have people see me making mistakes. Now, if I can practice and get good at something, then, then, then I'm willing to do it. But while I'm making mistakes, I hate to do that. So you, you don't want to botch it up, but if you can do it right, the way you want to do it, then it's all right, huh? Yeah, that's why I don't get to do a lot of things, because girls go and play things they're good at, and I'm not good at, and I'm left alone. It's sort of lousy. and. I wish I didn't do that. So these feelings kind of hold you back and keep you from... Yeah, well, they cut me out of doing a lot of things I'd really like to do. You'd like to be in there, but you just can't yeah. seem to... What I'd like to do is just sort of swallow my pride and go out and play baseball and not give a darn whether they laugh at me or not. You kind of like to get your teeth and no matter what, just go out there and, and do it. That's right. Boy. I might try that one of these mornings. Mm. Kind of think of one of these days you're going to go out there and really give the old... The old try. Right. Well, thanks for listening to me, Dad. Sure, huh? Okay, now, Patrick. Did you see the difference? Yeah, you, um, you didn't get mad at me. Didn't get mad at you? Gosh, I went deeper. I really got down to a much more fundamental problem than just playing baseball. Did you hear the really basic problem? Yeah, there? the problem wasn't uh, baseball. It was your feelings about yourself and how people react to you. And That's right. And I even made a tentative attempt to arrive at a solution to this problem. The next film, shot in black and white, shows how severely withdrawn children can often be helped through therapy administered by trained paraprofessionals. The first years of life are the most important for the development of emotional health. If treatment is begun early, a child has a much better chance to become a healthy adult. Here is one method of intervention that has proved effective. This is a normal, happy Head Start classroom. But what is the matter with Pat? Pat has withdrawn from a Head Start class. She's in a state of great mental pain and confusion. Unhappy, uncertain, unable to find a place. There is an appalling shortage of highly trained professional help for children such as Pat. If her teacher were to refer her for psychiatric aid, it could be months or years before she would get it, if ever. During that time, she could get worse or even end in an institution. And Pat is not alone. There are thousands upon thousands of children like her in schools throughout the country. There is a fresh solution to this urgent problem. Lay people, including college students, housewives, and Head Start mothers, can be trained in a relatively short time to be mental health therapists. This film will outline the training of these therapists and demonstrate how they can be effective. Pat is withdrawn. She will try to ignore her therapist and act oblivious of the camera crew. As a first step in therapy, Mrs. Thomas will insist that Pat be aware of her every moment the two are together. She will demand that Pat speak to her and touch her. She wants Pat to meet her eyes. And come out to the pot. Oh. 
Are you getting angry? Huh? Are you angry now? Oh. Pat reacts to these demands with anger. At the same time, she has become sharply aware of Mrs. Thomas. Give me one of those good fingers. Can I have this one? This one? Yeah. Well, look at the belly then. Yeah. No. Pat has just uttered her first word to a therapist, a very important word. No. Yeah. Oh. Why not? Why not? This is the beginning of the inevitable negative phase, a phase essential to the child's ultimate mental health. Pat has rejected all approaches and retreated to tears. But in spite of herself, she has become aware of a new friend with whom she can cuddle for comfort. 6 November 27. Let's see what's in your shoe. There's a sock. Look what I found. Mrs. Thomas tries to make her share the intimacy and fun of bare feet. Some toes. Some toes I found. Can you tell me about it, Pat? Is there something you need to tell me Pat about? Pat rejects her. Hmm? But today, Pat is more willing to share openly all of her feelings. How do I look? There. How do I look with a shoe on my head? Hmm? I bet you can't find it. I bet you can't find your shoes. For the first time, we see Pat take purposeful action. She uncurls, reaches out, and takes her shoe from Mrs. Thomas. Oh, you found it. Then she again retreats to tears. On 11, December 6th. In you go. Here we go. Look on the table. By this time, Mrs. Thomas is a familiar figure in Pat's life. Pat is still resistant. She still reverts to her old gesture of hiding her face. But today, she is increasingly willing to approach Mrs. Thomas, to look at her, even to touch her deliberately. Huh? Ah. Uh, no, I don't want them in my hand. I want you to feed them to me. Oh, no. Pat now has a friend she can share with. Five months later, May 1st. Of Pat, the teacher says, she is much more loving. I'm amazed at the change in her. When she comes in, she hugs me. She talks a lot more. She is still a long way to go, but she's more outgoing now and never nods her head or cringes like she used to do. It is important to know that help is available for children suffering from psychological and neurological problems. Physicians can be the best and most convenient counselors on these problems, but state and local mental health agencies can also be helpful. In this film, a teacher acts to resolve the underlying problem that caused a schoolyard fight. Before we begin the topic we were going to continue from yesterday, we had a problem downstairs. Donetta, do you want to tell us what was bothering you, honey? Donetta came in new several days after the semester began. And she was new to our school, she was new to our room, and she was very unhappy and quite lonely. And as a result, she became very belligerent. But I hadn't noticed the extent to which she was isolated until the meetings began. So, so I just, I hit him back. He pushed me in, he pushed me, because I wasn't even going yet. I told him I will go in a second. So I said, I did too. Come up here, Maury, and show us exactly what happened then. What was accomplished by acting out the fight? What I was trying to show the rest of the class is that this didn't accomplish very much. They're one pushing the other and the other pushing back. and. I think I was just using that as an example for the other children to come up with some ideas of a better way of solving their problems. Now, what could you have done instead of pushing her? Could you have said something? What could you have done? Mm -hmm. Can you call on one of your friends, maybe, to help you? Kevin has an idea. 
wobble, Ray? You don't get into trouble that way, but does it help you get rid of your anger? All the boys used to get together and have fight with each other. Somebody end up smiling, and then the other person start laughing, and then everybody start laughing. Is that a good way to end a fight if you smile and feel no. I had not realized I was doing that. I asked them the question, but I put the words into their mouths by my smile and my tone of voice. You walk home all by yourself? Why? All the kids go this way, and I go straight. Which way do you go? Straight. I go straight. I go straight that way. All right. Is there anybody who would like to walk home with Donetta? Who goes home Donetta's way? You go down that way, well, don't you? Uh -huh. Straight down 7th yeah. Avenue? Yeah. Who walks straight down 7th Avenue? Do you, Jay? Would you like to walk home with Donetta? Yeah. Okay. So you have somebody to walk home with, okay? I think as a result of our class meetings, she began to realize that the children in our room were genuinely interested in helping her. And I think she began to feel that the children were really trying to be her friends. We have shown you just a few selections from the hundreds of child mental health films available from distributors throughout the country. If you would like more information on child mental health films, you should write to Child Mental Health Films, room 15, C26, 5600, Fishers Lane, Rockville, Maryland, 20852.